think that uh, uh, he's a practical uh, conservative. Uh, he's, he's got a very conservative voting record, uh, but he's not uh, a knuckle dragger, right? Uh, he understood that TARP, uh, while none of us wanted to do it, uh, if we were going to save uh, uh, save our economy and save the world economy, it had to happen. I wish we didn't have to do it either, but he understood that. Welcome back to Harbor. That's House Speaker John Boehner's assessment of Congressman Paul Ryan. He said, not us, we didn't say it. He said he's not a knuckle dragger. By pointing out Ryan's not one of the knuckle draggers in his caucus, Boehner does imply that some GOP members are in fact knuckle draggers. Given the adamantly anti-science stance some Republican Party members have taken, we can't disagree. Above and beyond Todd Aiken saying women cannot become impregnated by a rape, there's more. Catch this, and this is a real pattern today. Exhibit A, global warming. New York Congresswoman Marianne Burkle, a Republican, has been dubbed a member of the Flat Earth Five for her denial of global warming. Let's listen to her. This cap and trade bill is a tax on energy. That's all it is. It's a tax on energy and it's based on some specious global, global warming. That, whether or not there's real global warming, has not been determined. Has not been determined. Burkle's in good company, by the way. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney agrees. Let's listen. My view is that we don't know Unbelievable. Anyway, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman wouldn't miss her, isn't so sure about evolution either, and she says she's got science on her side. There is a controversy among scientists about whether evolution is a fact. Well, what is the aversion on the Republican side to scientific fact these days? What's it doing to the Republican Party, to politics generally, and to Mitt Romney's chance of becoming president? Bill Nye is CEO of the Planetary Society and, of course, the science guy. And Howard Feynman, another kind of science guy, is editorial director of the Huffington Post, media group, and an MSNBC analyst. Uh, Bill, thanks so much for coming on. It's an unusual question, but... You know, I've got a little commentary at the end of the show. You could do much better. I talk about how the wonderful American tradition of young kids growing up loving Ben Franklin, loving uh, uh, Thomas Edison, loving the moonshot, all the days of Walt Disney, and, you know, watching our t attempts to catch the Russians and beating them finally and loving it. And what we do with every time we win a handful of uh, Nobel Prizes for chemistry or, or physics, we just love rooting for that in this country. What's going against that in the Republican Party? Without being too partisan, what's caused this rejectionism of thought? It's a mystery, but it's generally agreed that whatever you believe as a kid sticks with you your whole life. And so I would say in general, these people got misperceptions when they were young and it's still with them. And that wouldn't matter except we have climate change. We have seven billion people living on what's proven to be a pretty small planet. So being anti-science at this point in history is very serious for all humankind, and of course it's very serious <clears throat> for us as uh, citizens of the U.S. who have this expectation that we will be leaders in science and technology. And what well, I really encourage, out. yeah, uh, go ahead. Chris, sorry, go ahead. what I really encourage you guys. Well, no, I'm just asking you in the media to ask these people who are running for president and vice president, ask them directly. Uh, about climate change, ask them directly about science, ask them directly about evolution, rather than just getting these sound bites, which are very compelling uh, and creepy, <laughs> uh, unsettling. Uh, just ask them directly, why don't you believe in climate change? What is it about it that, that you find unacceptable? Because well, thanks uh, to the science is overwhelming. Well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nye, let me tell you, we did. Here back at the last presidential campaign, back in 2000. Eight, we asked Mr. Romney and the others about this whole question of uh, evolution. And uh, watch this. What happened when we... It was Jim Van de Heij, was my co-anchor that night out of the Reagan Library, and he began asking them about uh, who believes in evolution and who doesn't believe in evolution. And here's uh, John McCain sort of starting it off on the right foot, and then these other guys going the other way. Let's watch. 
Senator McCain, uh, this comes from a Politico.com reader and was among the top vote getters in our early rounds. They want a yes or no. Do you believe in evolution? Yes. Is, and I'm curious, is there anybody on the stage that does not agree in that, uh, believe in evolution? Yeah. May I, may I well, just add to that? Sure. <laughs> I, I believe in evolution, but I also believe when I hike the Grand Canyon and see it at sunset that the hand of God is there also. <clears throat> Well, that sounds right to me. But look, Brownback, Huckabee, and Tancredo all put their hands up. They don't believe in evolution. Howard, I think there's a couple of things going on here. Obviously, business types think that if they accept the fact that there's a mankind influence on climate change, they're going to have to change some of their regulatory laws, it's good CO2 emissions, they're going to have to deal with that. It's going to hurt their freedom in the marketplace, right? There's the other thing about the religious front, and you and I were trained in the Bible. We learned it was all part of the moral lesson we were taught as children, so powerful in our lives. But the scientific nature, we always said yes, but that was important. There's important stories in the Bible, but there's also science and archaeological fact out there we have to deal with, and the history of the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, that all occurred as well. But these new people politically are saying, oh, no, no. All answers are in the Bible. We, we politicians have to say so. And we have well, to deny the history of mankind and the history of this planet. Chris, it's frightening. Uh, I'm not making a value judgment when I say this, okay? But the Republican Party has become a faith-based party. Yeah. Starting with Ronald Reagan, there was a marriage between the Bible Belt of the South, the fundamentalist, Bible Belt of the Literal South. interpretation. Literal interpretation. And Catholics elsewhere in the country who are becoming more conservative socially, they joined hands. And there are many good things that came from that, especially if you believe in the Republican Party and its success. But these people start from a fundamentally different point of view on questions such as abortion, on questions such as yeah. evolution, on questions such as climate change. They see, as John McCain belatedly said, the hand of God in everything that happens, and they look to God first. Uh, there are legitimate concerns, for example, about genetic manipulation of the human species. Who Should we leave that to God, or do we as human beings take that on? There's a serious point I underneath agree. this, okay? There is. But nobody in the modern Republicly, Republican Party dares question the orthodoxy of a faith-based Republican Party at this point. That's what it is. It's a Bible-based Republican yeah, and I think party. It also, it's also market-based. Uh, let me get back to Mr. Lie here, Nye here. But first of all, it seems to be that when you get a guy like this guy, Todd Aiken, saying you can't get impregnated if you raped, it seems to be what he's wrestling with is this sort of fundamentalist notion. If abortion's wrong, then how could God have allowed situations where it might be necessary or appropriate by, because of rape? Therefore, simply dictate the fact, you know, well, you can't get and pregnant. You can't get pregnant if you're raped. That's a way of circumventing any evil, any uh, scientific fact. Just create a new one. Well, explain why you got uh, to yeah, say well, something like that. Well, I think it's just what you're saying. It's wishful thinking. And, and I talk about this all the time. If you grow up, if you had grown up in Oklahoma with these wide open spaces and your neighbor, your nearest neighbor is very far away, having human species change the climate of the planet is literally unimaginable and so you you develop this world view that uh, what you what you expect to be true will be true and I, I just want to add this point for both of you guys while you're here after this uh, convention just beware whether you're a conservative voter or a progressive voter just beware that mr. Romney has a long tradition of changing of changing yeah. the way he uh, talks about these things and I will not be surprised if he uh, goes much more to the center very quickly. I, this Don't count on it. Let me, tell, let me give you this some advice. I do you this for a really living, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Science Guy. We'll bring I do this for a living. We'll bring he it ain't going to even it's... try that, baby, this yeah. time. That was the old game. I, I, I think, think the old game yeah. was go to the center. This guy wants really? to hide up his base. Okay. Well, he wants to heat up the pressure cooker. I, I think what's, uh, and Dede Meyer said in the first segment, Paul Ryan is representative of a new generation that was born into that new Republican Party yeah. that I described just and before. And they're the ones having the convention he's the first, this week. He's the first Gen Xer to be on a presidential yeah. ticket. He's 42 years old. He's steeped in this. He starts every consideration of public policy, not from the standpoint of science, but from the standpoint of faith. 
That's who Paul Ryan is. I know. And they're not going to shut him up if he gets into He's the White House. He's going to make Barry Goldwater look like Nelson Rockefeller by the end of this convention. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Nye. <laughs> okay. And I, 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 I oh, share no, your worry you about this. And I respect out. you so much. Are you telling well, us how to do this much, thing? Just thank you. Yes, thank you, Howard. Thank you. This thank guy's you. telling us how to do what we do That's all the okay. time. That's okay. All right. You explain no, the uh, general theory of relativity, and I'll try to explain this stuff.